Are you not sports entertained? Are you not sports entertained? Ah, uh, cause I'm not fucking sports entertained. Uh, this show was dog shit. Uh, it's time for the Raw Review. February 20 goddamn second from 2016, motherfuckers. Detroit, Michigan, the Joe Lewis Arena. I'm putting on my Paul Heyman. I'm doing the hype man shtick. Yeah! This show was ass! <sighs> I'm about to snap, people. I came back to this garbage and I really don't know why. Mm. The show started off promising enough. And then they flushed all that good shit down the fucking toilet. The show starts with a recap of the triple threat match from the pay-per-view last night. Showing Roman winning, of course. Cutting into the arena, well not even cutting into the arena, they show the intro video for once. And they get pyro afterwards. The commentators talk a bunch of hot garbage. And they segue into, once again, a Facebook video that shows from earlier today Dean Ambrose arriving at the arena in the car park backstage. Only to, as soon as he shows up, get attacked by Brock Lesnar, slamming him. Brock slams Ambrose on the hood and windshield of a limousine that's parked there. And this breaks the window of the car, the windshield. It doesn't explode or anything like that. It just leaves some spiderweb cracks. Apparently, this was enough to send Ambrose out on a stretcher. And he is stretchered out to a hospital. So, here's a word to the wise. If you're in the Joe Louis arena, stay the fuck out of the car park! Austin got ran over by Rikishi there, and now this bullshit with Ambrose. Stay out of the fucking parking garage of the Joe Louis Arena. You could die. Holy shit. <sighs> More talking from the commentators. We fucking cut to the arena. Vince's music hits. Oh my god. McMahon's in the house. <sighs> he comes the fuck to the ring. And of course, as they said last night, this is where the Vincent J. McMahon Award is going to be on the show, right at the top of the show. Vince spews a lot of hot garbage talking about his family. He would be the third generation. His grandfather, his father, Vincent J. McMahon, and now he is running wrestling in the United States. And he says, this award here is for someone who epitomizes the, the characteristics of Vincent J. McMahon, who was a very kind man, who was very compassionate and generous. And Vince announced that the recipient is going to be someone who epitomizes those traits. And the recipient is none other than Stephanie McMahon, who comes out amidst a fucking loud chorus of boos, because everybody hates this cunt at this point. She talks to more boos, because the fans just don't even want to hear this bitch anymore. Stephanie starts doing the crocodile tears. I'm so sad. I didn't know you were going to give me this award, but I had a speech prepared. She's got a little, one of those professional, like, almost like a trapper keeper, but it's all, like, leather-bound, and it's kind of, not small, it's like the size of a notebook. 
But she's like, oh yeah, I didn't know you were going to give me this, but I had a speech prepared, complete with a little leather-bound notebook and everything. You fucking cunt, I swear to God, you need to die hard. <sighs> she starts talking. And just as Vince is about to give her the award, the most unexpected and shocking thing happens. Here comes the money! Holy shit, Shane McMahon is back in the house, in the WWE. He comes out a juking and jiving, doing his little fucking dance that he always does. And he milks it for fucking way too long. He finally makes his way to the ring and gets in more dancing and more of his little shit. And the fucking, the crowd won't stop chanting. They, he comes out to a huge pop, of course. And, uh... Huge pop, they chant Shane O'Mac, and they chant holy shit, and they chant this is awesome. <laughs> Shane's just milking it, he's just letting it all sink in. Vince comes up to him and goes in for a hug, and Shane holds his hand out, he's like, nah. And Vince goes for a handshake, and again, Shane's like, nah, I don't think so. Shane starts talking, he thanks the crowd for the warm reception, and after all that, who wouldn't, you know? Jesus Christ. He says that Stephanie ain't worthy of this award, which, no shit, she's not worthy. She's a cunt. She's not kind and compassionate, she's a fucking whore. Stephanie tries to interject, and she gets booed for it. Of course. Shane starts talking directly to Vince, and he's like, Does she not know? She, she doesn't know, does she? Doesn't know what? Well, Shane continues. And he says that, you know, since uh, like seven or eight years ago when Shane left, Triple H and Stephanie and Vince have been running the company into the ground. My sentiments exactly! Vince asks Stephanie to leave. He says, you know what, It's everything's cool. I'll give you the award later backstage. Everything's fine. Stephanie's like, seriously, is all this shit true or whatever? <laughs> Shane even says, you know what, what's gonna happen here is gonna be best for business. Using their stupid, terrible line against them. Stephanie starts leaving and the crowd, nah, 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 nah. Na 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 na, hey, goodbye. Shane continues talking, saying that this whole thing for him is about the legacy, the legacy of excellence, as the award was titled. And this is about the legacy, the McMahon legacy. He wants to continue the McMahon legacy. He said, Vince's grandfather, Vince's father, Vince, and then Shane. And Shane has three sons with his wife. The exact opposite of Triple H and Stephanie, who have nothing but daughters. Oh, that's hilarious. They finally get around to the whole point of this thing. Vince is like, what do you want, Shane? And Shane says, isn't it obvious? I want control of Monday Night Raw. <sighs> Crowd, of course, popped to that, yeah. Because anybody besides Triple H and Steph and Vince would be a huge improvement. And Vince is like, oh, you want control of Raw because that basically means you'll have control of the company. Because SmackDown follows Raw and everything else follows Raw's lead. So if you control Raw, you control the whole company. Yeah, he should just have control of the whole company. And uh, Vince, Vince mentions something about some lockbox. Oh, yes. Uh... They get around to talking about this deal that they struck a long time ago. And, well, they talked about that. And then they get around to this, and Vince says, You know what? I'll give you what you want. I'll give you control of Raw. 
But in exchange, I want that lockbox you have and everything in it. But there's one condition. Shane was like, yeah, what's the catch? Shane gets a you still got it chant. They're, they're, they're striking this deal. And Vince says something that has to be censored because they're on the USA network. Apparently what he said is, I want another chance to beat the fucking piss out of you. Or something along those lines. Vince says, here's the catch. I'll give you what you want, but you have to be in one match on one day. And Shane's like, okay, fine, you got a deal. And Vince says, before Shane leaves, he says, the time and the place is going to be WrestleMania. He points at the sign. The time and place is going to be WrestleMania, and your opponent is going to be The Undertaker. And one more thing, just so you don't take your ball and leave like you did before, it's going to be in hell in a cell. And Vince leaves, and that's the end of that segment, and they cut to a commercial break. This whole thing, by the way, took about 40 goddamn minutes of airtime. So while the prospect of Shane being in control of the company, it's all storyline. So it still probably is going to suck. While the prospect of getting rid of Triple H and Stephanie... Well, that sounds really good. It also... They stole my idea. I've been thinking about a storyline like this for a while now. I don't know if I've ever said this on the show. But I've had a storyline. I've been thinking about it since even before I came back to doing this shit. Because even while I was away from the WWE, I was still thinking about it. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just psychotic that way. But I've been thinking about this storyline. I wanted somebody new to come in. A complete renegade. Someone who has it signed into his contract. He's completely immune from being fired. And that's why he's able to get away with the things he ends up getting away with. He comes out and he would challenge Triple H to a match at Mania. And control of the company would be in at stake. So, while I've never really said this on any of my videos, I don't think, they still basically stole my idea. Oh well, big deal. Let's just move on. There's going to be plenty of rage later. Okay? Oh boy, oh boy. Coming back from the commercial, Neville's music hits, and he comes out. And then the Lucha Dragons come out. And I'm thinking, oh god, are we going to do this match again? No. Up next, The New Day comes out. And they get a picture-in-a-picture picture promo while they're coming out. And I don't know who the hell they were. The, the League of Nations or somebody, maybe? I don't know. They bring up this cereal box, Bootios. This is some cheesy shit here, folks. We get a match, a six-way tag match between these six. And it actually turns out to be a good match. And this match also went for about 20 fucking minutes. So way to fill the first hour of the show with one giant long-ass promo and one long-ass match. I think the match maybe dragged on a little too long, but it was pretty good still. There were two commercial breaks during this match. That's how long it was. And those were the first two things of note from the match. Um... Okay, Xavier Woods was on the top rope going for something. And somebody knocked him off and he fell all the way to the floor smacking his head on the damn ring steps. And he was out. He looked like he was out cold. Um, later on in the match, Big E goes for that apron spear that he used to do. 
and he actually misses it. I think Neville was the one on the apron. Neville sidestepped it, so Big E splats on the floor. Um, and then I think uh, Neville did a big uh, springboard moonsault or something, or a shooting star or something. I don't know what the hell he did. He did a springboard, and he wiped out somebody at ringside. He's laying on the guy at ringside, and then up comes, I don't know if it was Sin Cara or if it was uh, Kalisto, but somebody jumps off of Neville's back, does a springboard 450 onto one of the other New, Ga New Day guys who was laying on the floor there too. So that was huge. Sin Cara's in the ring with Kofi Kingston. Sin Cara went for something. Kofi grabbed him and started fish hooking his mask, trying to pull his mask off. Cara's distracted by that. Kofi hits the trouble in paradise, kicks Sin Cara in the face, covers him one, two, three, and the New Day wins. So, it was a cool finish. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened at the end of the match. So, yeah, that was interesting. Ah. Uh. We cut backstage, there's Roman Reigns. Up comes Jojo, and she asks him about, How's Dean? Have you heard anything from Dean? And I'm right there with you. Never mind Roman. How's Dean doing after getting his ass kicked by Brock again? And, and, uh... Roman's like, you know, I've got my phone here, I've been texting him, I've been trying to get a hold of the people at the hospital, nobody's telling me nothing, and... And then JoJo asks him, how about this whole thing at WrestleMania? Now you, the match is set between you and Triple H. And he's like, yeah, whatever. It's going to be a big challenge and, you know, whatever the fuck. Who cares? Uh, speaking of Dean, they show a, a replay of the stupid Facebook video of Brock beating the shit out of Ambrose again. And I can already call what's about to happen here. We'll get to this. But I already predicted it as soon as all this shit happened. So I just want you to know that real quick. Uh, speaking of, we get hype for Brock, who's going to come out and talk next. And they cut to another commercial break. And at 9 o'clock, so this is one full hour into the show, out comes Lesnar with Paul Heyman. And Heyman does all the talking. He, he doesn't start with his normal spiel, no. He says, This here is the main event. Any segment that my client Brock Lesnar is in is the main event. He starts spewing all this hot garbage, and I want to fucking punch him in his bald head. Ugh. He starts talking... Uh, he starts talking about the triple threat last night. He says that Dean Ambrose took what was supposed to be a normal triple threat match, a wrestling match, and he turned it into a street fight with weapons and all that. And I'm like, motherfucker, it's a no DQ match. Triple threat matches are always no DQ. And Ambrose was doing anything he could to win. And nobody in their right fucking mind would do otherwise. But Heyman says, you know, this whole street fight thing, Brock is pissed. And I'm like, I don't fucking give a shit if Brock is pissed. Brock can go fuck himself, you mongoloid fuck. I don't care if the steroided up ape is fucking pissed off. I'm pissed off at this shitty fucking show. They show the fucking footage of Brock beating up Ambrose in the car park again on the fucking Titan Tron. More hype, more bullshit. Heyman starts going on his spiel where he's talking about these guys who do parkour and they're doing all this shit and the fucking thing. He slaps the fucking microphone out of his own hand. He basically fucked up the mic so he had to get a new microphone. And he ends with a so saith the Haman and so saith the beast and all this hot garbage. <clears throat> Brock and Haman get ready to leave. Titantron lights up. And you can hear the ambulance sirens. I called this, okay? I knew it was going to fucking happen. As soon as I saw the video, the first time they played it, 
of Ambrose getting his ass kicked by Lesnar and getting stretched out, I said Ambrose is going to come back driving the fucking ambulance. And sure enough, that's exactly what fucking happens. The fucking Titan Tron is lit up. They're back there in the car park. They got to open up this garage door. Here comes the fucking ambulance. It plows through a bunch of stage shit. It comes out next to the fucking stage in the arena. Ambrose is driving. He opens the door and he falls out of the fucking ambulance. He's still hurt. He's still selling the injuries. Which, by the way, pussy shit. I'm not saying Ambrose is a pussy, but if you watch the video of Brock beating up Ambrose, he really didn't do anything to him that was all that bad. He comes up and he clocks Ambrose, and Ambrose falls back against this other car, and he starts hitting him and kneeing him and kneeing him, and then he grabs him and he puts him up and he, like, power slams him on the hood and windshield of this car, breaking the windshield. That was all he did. He didn't give him an F5... He didn't do anything else. It was a really weak beatdown. So for Ambrose to sell it this much makes him look really fucking weak. He had to go to the hospital for his shit. Fuck off. Ambrose took a goddamn recirculating saw to the fucking head. He's tougher than this shit. Fuck Lesnar. Ambrose falls out of the ambulance. And he starts hobbling and crawling his way. He stumbles onto the fucking ramp and starts coming down, crawling his way to the fucking ring. Lesnar and Heyman get out of the ring, and they're right there at ringside in the front of the ring by the ramp. And Ambrose finally crawls his way down and basically collapses on the mats there in front of them. He's practically spitting up blood. He's not, but he basically is. Brock looks down at him, basically laughs him off, steps right on Ambrose's face and walks over him and starts leaving. Just as he's about to leave, Ambrose's voice comes over. He's got a mic and he says, Brock, you can kiss my ass. I ain't done. You ain't that tough. He's all this and that. I want a match with you at WrestleMania. A no-holds-barred street fight. Brock and Heyman come back. Brock picks up Ambrose, F5s him on the fucking floor. And then the asshole crowd in Detroit start chanting one more time. And I'm like, motherfuckers, you cheered this guy as he came out in the ambulance. And now you want Brock to kill him. The crowd tonight, bipolar is all fucking hell, by the way. So Dean's laying on the floor after the F5. Heyman grabs the microphone. He gets right down in Ambrose's face and he says, My client accepts your challenge. And that's the end of that segment. And they cut to another fucking commercial break. Coming back from the commercial break. The Usos come out. We haven't seen them since Raw two weeks ago when they were put through tables by the Dudleys. It's a shame they didn't stay gone longer. As they're getting in the ring, I notice there's the Ascension guys over by the commentators' tables standing on at ringside. I'm like, they get jobber entranced for the fucking Usos. Speaking of which, we get a recap of the Dudleys attacking the Usos from two weeks ago. And the Dudleys music hits, and they come out to the stage, and they both have microphones, and they talk. They talk all this hot garbage. We're not one-trick ponies, and I'm thinking, yes, you are. We're not a nostalgia act, and I'm thinking, yes, you fucking are. You're 40 goddamn years old, and you both suck ass from a straw. There's not going to be any more tables. That makes you boring. Go fuck yourselves. And they say something about the Usos. They, they, they start saying, it's not personal. And then they make it personal by saying, your daddy, Rikishi, should have saved that money uh, uh, and saved all that time buying those giant thongs that he used to wear. And he should have spent time teaching you boys about respect. 
The Ascension attacks the Usos from behind, and this is the jump start to the match. We get the match between these two teams, and it's a crap filler match. Lasted about two or three minutes tops. Crowds. The Dudleys are standing there on the stage watching the whole time. Crowd starts chanting, we want tables. The Usos hit their fucking stupid splash on one of the Ascension guys. One, two, three, the Usos win. Moving on. Oh, the crowd was dead after the match, by the way. And the Dudleys come down the ramp like they're going to get in the ring, and the Usos are like, bring it on, and just fuck off. Don't give a shit about either of these teams. They both suck. We get hype for the Wyatts versus the Big Show, Kane, and Ryback. Again! They did it last night, and they're doing it here again tonight. Commercial break. Coming back, Chris Jericho comes out to a small reaction. It didn't really seem all that big of a pop for Jericho. He gets in. The, he's he's in full ring gear, and I'm like, he's coming out to the ring to talk. Why is he in full ring gear? He gets in the ring and he starts talking about AJ Styles. He says, "You know what, AJ? You beat me last night. You beat me fair and square." He's putting over AJ. He calls AJ out. I want to say this stuff to your face, because I'm a man, and I know you're a man, so like, come on out. AJ comes out, of course, to a big pop, and he gets his full entrance with Pyro, and he's in full ring gear as well. And I'm like, why are these guys in full ring gear if they're just talking? There's a dueling chant, Y2J, AJ Styles, Y2J, you know. Jericho says, I want to con congratulate you for beating me last night. You know what? You done good. And they shake hands again. And then the social outcasts music hits. And the four of those jabroni ass clowns come out. And they're talking all this hot garbage, making fun of Jericho and AJ. Oh, are you going to kiss and all this shit? Like, nah, 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 nah. And, oh, God. They get in the ring like they're going to beat up Jericho and AJ. And I'm thinking, yeah, even four on one, two, you assholes couldn't beat up AJ and Jericho. Jericho calls Heath Slater a ginger jackass because Slater was doing most of the talking. And they're like, are you guys a team now? And Jericho's like, yeah, maybe we are a team now. So why don't we have a tag team match? <laughs> they cut to a commercial break. And sure enough, when we come back from the break, we're having a tag match. AJ and Jericho versus Heath Slater and Curtis Axel. And of course, the other two jabronis are at ringside. <sighs> the interference, uh, the, the only notes from this match... Of course, the other two jabronis try to interfere in the match. It gets swatted away like the flies that they are. AJ hits his Pele kick, uh, gets the hot tag into Jericho. Uh, Jericho locks in the walls of Jericho on... Axel, I think, maybe? Or maybe it was... Who cares? One of the social retards. And... As the other guy was coming into the ring to break up the submission, AJ springboards, clocks him in the fucking face with a forearm. That dude rolls out of the ring. AJ then springboards up to the top rope and does a big, huge flying crossbody, wipes out all three of the other outcasts on the floor. This leaves Jericho in the ring with the walls of Jericho locked on on whichever jabroni it was, and he has to tap out. So, AJ and Jericho win. We get a recap of the stuff with Shane from earlier. And then we cut backstage to the office. There's Triple H and Stephanie talking. Something about Roman Reigns. Do you want to tell him, Steph? And Sh Stephanie's like, yeah, I want to tell him. And Triple H is like, yeah, I thought you would. Don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Commercial break. 
Coming back from the commercial, there's Roman backstage in one of the hallways, sure enough. And up comes Stephanie, and she says, uh... And Stephanie says, what are you doing, Roman? He's like, I was just checking on Ambrose, you know? And I'm like, oh, now you're checking on Ambrose. You know, he was outside getting his ass kicked by Brock Lesnar again earlier. Why the hell didn't you get him? Why didn't you help him? And I'm talking about at the ringside area when Brock F5'd him on the fucking floor. I'm like, where the fuck was Roman that whole time? Another parallel between Roman and Ambro or Roman and John Cena. John Cena's never there for his friends either. Every time somebody has been pushed as being John Cena's friend, and then that person starts getting their ass kicked, John Cena's nowhere to be found to make the save. Same thing with Roman. Ambrose, his bro, his brother, getting destroyed by Brock Lesnar. Roman's backstage. Don't know if he was taking a shit or if he had something else that was uh, occupying his attention. I don't know what the fuck. Whatever the fuck. Stephanie informs Roman, you've got a match tonight against Sheamus of the League of Nations. Like we need to be reminded of that horse shit. And she also reminds Roman that, you know, where one League of Nations member goes, so do the other three. blah 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 We cut backstage to a locker room. There's R-Truth listening to his headphones or some shit. Up comes Goldust, scaring the shit out of Truth. And they talk back and forth about all the bullshit Gold Dust trying to recruit Truth. And the, the, uh, Truth mentions the match from last night. And Gold Dust is like, yeah, I cost you that match. And I'm thinking it was a pointless match that had no hype or build for it. It wasn't even announced for the pay-per-view. It was a completely meaningless match. So why does it matter that you lost? Because wins and losses in the WWE don't mean fuck all. Goldust is like, I'm going to apologize. I baked you this cake. And he brings up this cake. Yellow frosting. It says, I'm sorry on it. Oh, isn't that precious? And, uh... The truth is like, I don't want not a part of this. But whatever the fuck. And, and, and Goldust cuts him off. But he's like, but I know everything that you're going to do and say. That's why we would be such a good team. And Truth's like, oh, really? You know everything I'm going to do. So you know that I'm about to throw this cake in your face. And Goldust is like, I hope not. Truth's like, no, I'm better than that. And he walks away. And then he comes back psych and he splats the fucking cake into Goldust's face. He's like, oh. And that's the end of that segment. Cutaway gag. The Wyatts come out. At the 10 o'clock hour. Or no. They come out shortly before the 10 o'clock hour. They come out and the big show comes out and Ryback comes out. And while all the entrances are going on, the Wyatts fuck with Byron Saxton. The two sheep masks get put on his face, one on the front one on the back. Don't know what the hell that was all about. Kane comes out, and they cut to a commercial break, and about there is the 10 o'clock hour. So we're at the two-hour mark of this shit, and basically nothing has happened aside from the big earth-shattering thing that Shane might be taking control of the company. Again, though, I have to add, it's just storyline shit. It won't matter in the long run. Coming back from the break, we get this match. And it's a shit match, just like it was last night. Immediately after the fucking commercial break ends, they're doing the match, the crowd is chanting, Boring! Boring! And then I think it was JBL had this classic line on commentary. He says, uh, Luke Harper looks like Bruiser Brody. And I'm thinking, yeah. Luke Harper looks like Bruiser Brody does... Now, after he's been dead for like 20 years, Luke Harper looks like shit with his fucking, fucking bird nest egg bald spot on the back of his fucking head. Commercial break. 
Ryback's in the ring after the break, and they're chanting Gilberg at him. Not Goldberg anymore. Gilberg. That was hilarious. Oh, something I forgot to mention. It's not the same three Wyatts facing Kane and Big Show and Ryback. Instead of Strowman, he's on the outside. Bray is taking his place. So it's Bray, Harper, and Rowan, the original Wyatt family. Or at least the original WWE version of it. Because in NXT, it was different. Eli Cottonwood was in it. And if you don't remember Eli Cottonwood, don't worry, no one else does either. From the outside of the ring, Strowman interferes by pulling the ropes down when Sho went to hit the ropes. The crowd starts chanting, Let's go, Blue! Let's go, Blue! Because they're in Michigan, they're chanting for Michigan State. Uh, towards the end of the match, it's looking like Kane has it all wrapped up. He's clearing house. Ryback jumps off the apron and leaves. <laughs> Bray hits Sister Abigail on Kane and gets the win, and the crowd's dead. And the cutaway gag. We have hype for Roman versus Sheamus, and they cut to a commercial break. Coming back from the commercial break, there's Ryback in one of the backstage areas. He's leaving. And up comes, uh, it's not JoJo this time, it's um, the guy who was in the social media lounge last night. I don't know his name. Blah, 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 heel turn shit. He did the classic fucking jumping off the apron during the tag team heel spot. But then he cuts this promo that almost turns him back to being a face. Basically saying, I'm looking out for myself. I don't need to be in a team anymore. I won the match last night at the pay-per-view. And he says, The glass ceiling and the brass ring, break it and take it. And that's the end of that. I fucking hate you, Ryback. You're ripping off CM Punk with those knees in the corner. You're ripping off Goldberg with them little black trunks now. You're a steroided up hoss who's never been all that good. And you've got hardly any fucking charisma. Cutting back to the arena, Sasha's terrible music hits, but she comes out to a pop. And then Naomi's terrible music hits, and this is the first time I've noticed this, and I don't know how I haven't noticed this, probably because every time her music hits, I'm like, fuck this bitch, and I'm just yelling at the screen. But I actually noticed it this time. Her theme song starts off, I'm amazing, and I'm like, really? Because the last I checked, you was a piece of shit, honey. Naomi comes out with Tamina. To no reaction, of course. We get the match between Sasha and Naomi, and of course it was fucking crap, just like it always is with Naomi. Sasha botched. Uh, let's see, what was it? I'm trying to remember. I think they tried to do that spot where... The heel catches the face's foot and then flips him over. And they're supposed to land on their feet and come right back. Well, Sasha landed and then fell on her ass. And as she's getting up, Naomi's standing there and then she kicks her. And I'm like, well, fuck. Good way to, to prove you're the boss there, Sasha. And of course, since it's basically two on one, Tamina trips Sasha while she's on the outside the uh, the apron. Sasha eats a face full of fucking apron and smacks on the floor. And then they cut to a commercial break. Coming back from the break, there was a bunch of other bullshit. Uh, Tamina tried getting involved. Becky comes running out of nowhere and jumps on Tamina and starts beating the crap out of her. Meanwhile, off of the distraction, uh, Sasha's back in the ring. She locks the bank statement on Naomi's punk ass and gets the tap-out victory. 
Yay. Out comes Charlotte to her shitty music. Of course, with her daddy. And here's the noteworthy thing. Charlotte is wearing a tube top like like the Bellas wear. Red, but it says uh, champion or some shit. I don't know what the fuck it said. But she was basically ripping off the Bellas with this outfit. Yeah. She starts talking a lot more hot, hot garbage. And she's doing the crocodile tears also. And Flair even holds hands her a tissue. And she's like, thanks for the tissue, Dad. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this bitch is really taking lessons from Stephanie. The crocodile tears. The fucking stealing of the Daniel Bryan yes chant. Doing it like a troll like Stephanie does. She looks like a fucking tranny just like Stephanie does. And basically, the point of her whole promo is announcing that at WrestleMania, there's going to be a triple threat match for the Divas title, Charlotte defending against Sasha and Becky. We cut backstage to another locker room. There's Sheamus getting psyched up for his match. And then the other three jabronis in the League of jabronis come up and they're like yeah and I'm just slapping him on the chest and, yeah we're gonna blah, whatever the fuck cut to a commercial coming back from the commercial they recap again the stuff with Shane from the beginning of the show we cut backstage to the office again and there's Vince and Stephanie they talk a lot of hot garbage and Stephanie's like I don't know what Shane has over you Apparently, Shane is essentially blackmailing Vince with this lockbox that he has. Apparently, it's got, like, incriminating photos or some kind of bullshit. I don't know what. I don't even remember what the point of this segment was. But, oh yeah, Vince said something like, Shane's chances against The Undertaker are astronomical, even more so in a Hell in a Cell. And I'm thinking this whole time, what does The Undertaker think about this whole thing? Does he really want to do this? Why would he do this? He has no motivation to do this. I'd laugh my ass off if WrestleMania, Shane comes out and The Undertaker comes out and they lower the cell and then Undertaker just lays down for Shane, just to fuck over McMahon. I would laugh my white ass off if that actually happens at Mania. Because that would just be amazing. <laughs> Anyways, we cut back to the commentators. And they segue into a video. It's time for our... It's time for us to show who's going to be the next inductee into the Hall of Fame for this year. They've already announced Sting. The next inductee is going to be The Godfather. And JBL from Commentary says, I've got so many great stories about The Godfather and me and, me and uh, Ron Simmons, you know, and everything... And me and Ron, the APA, are going to be inducting the Godfather. And I'm like, I don't fucking care about any of this. Roman's music hits, and he comes out through the crowd like he always does. And they cut to a commercial break. And I'm thinking, oh Christ, they're cutting to a commercial break. How much you want to bet the League of Jobbers is going to get the jobber entrance and they're going to be already in the ring when the commercial ends? No. Commercial ends and they say that this Thursday on SmackDown, Triple H is going to be there. And I'm like, don't care? Because, you know, he was there last week, I'm pretty sure. But they're saying, oh, it's the first time since he found out who his WrestleMania opponent is. And I'm like, who cares? The shitty music for the League of Nations hits, and those jabronis come the fuck out to no 
reaction. Because, again, no one cares about these fuckheads. Oh, yeah. And it's only about 15 to 20 minutes before 11 o'clock at this point. So I'm thinking, there's no way this match is going 20 minutes. Sure enough, it don't. Here's what happens. Of course, since it's all four of the League of Nations, the other three get involved in the match. So there's interference. Referee doesn't see it, of course. They cut to a commercial break. And when we come back from the commercial break, the crowd is chanting for JBL. I don't know why they would chant for that piece of shit. And the commentators mention, you might notice that the rest of the League of Nations are gone right now. And I'm like, no, I wouldn't notice that because I don't give a fuck. But the, the commentators explain, during the commercial break, the referee ejected their punk asses. Don't know what for. Who cares? Uh, Sheamus, or not Sheamus, Roman hits a Superman punch on Sheamus. Sheamus rolls out of the ring. Uh, the crowd booed the Superman punch, by the way. Uh, Reigns gets out of the ring and spears Sheamus on the floor. The referee, of course, is doing the counting because, you know, both guys are out of the ring. He gets up to about seven or eight and Roman rolls back in the ring and I'm like, what kind of coward are you that you're going to win by fucking ten, you're going to win by count out? Before the referee can get to 10, Triple H's music hits. And he comes out in his badass gear. He's got on the, 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 the jean pants and his leather jacket with his t-shirt on. And he's got the title belt over his shoulder. And he's got his bottle of water. And he spits some. He takes off the jacket and he dumps the belt. And he goes down to the... He starts going down to the ring. Roman gets out of the ring and meets him. And they start brawling on the outside. Apparently the match was thrown out. Either that or the match would have been awarded to Roman be, via DQ. Because, you know, Triple H. And this is where the show completely went off the fucking rails. Triple H is obviously the fucking heel here. He does all the heel shit, and he's still getting cheered massively by the crowd. Roman punches Triple H, and they boo. Triple H punches Roman, and they cheer. Uh, Triple H clocks Roman with the ring bell. The crowd starts chanting, Triple H, Triple H. He grabs Roman by the head and starts banging his fucking head repeatedly on the fucking commentator's table. A dozen fucking times or so. And Roman's bleeding at this point. And every time Roman's head smacks the fucking table, the crowd, yes, 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 yes. And the crowd starts chanting, this is awesome. Reigns is bleeding. He's a bloody fucking mess. He go Roman falls down on the floor and Triple H is on top of him just hammering with his fucking, just punching him with his fist. A bunch of referees have to come out to pull Triple H off of Roman's carcass. And the crowd boos that. They're like, no, let him keep beating the shit out of that wank peasant, Roman fucking Reigns. Triple H breaks free of the referees and he grabs the ring steps and takes the top part of it off. And he grabs Roman and he pulls him over to, he cinches him up for the fucking pedigree. And he, he's, <clears throat> he cinches Roman up for the pedigree. And I'm thinking, no, you fool, you've got two bad quads already. Don't blow out another one. He plants Roman face first on the fucking steps. To cheers. The crowd cheering uproariously. Because they hate Roman so fucking much. And Triple H even gives him a suck it for good measure. And Triple H holds up the fucking title belt. 
And that's the end of Raw. This show was absolute dog shit. You have the obvious heel, Triple H, getting cheered uproariously like a fucking babyface, like the ultimate fucking babyface, even though he attacks a motherfucker during his match, beats him to a bloody fucking pulp, hits him with the ring bell, pedigreed him on the fucking steps, all the heel shit, and he's still cheered despite the fact he's still one of the biggest fucking scumbags this fucking industry has ever seen. Who are these fucking people in Detroit cheering for this piece of shit scumbag motherfucker? I know you don't like Roman, but goddamn. This is shit. This is weapons grade shit. I fucking hate this company. I hate Triple H's guts. I hate Vince. I hate Stephanie. What the fuck is wrong with you people cheering for Triple H? Like I said, I understand you hate Roman. I'm right there with you. I don't like the guy either. He's a wank peasant. But for fuck's sake, Triple H is even goddamn worse. He's boring as all fucking hell. He cuts some of the longest, most boring fucking promos of anybody ever. And all he does is hog the fucking spotlight from younger people. I can't believe this shit. That people would cheer so vociferously for a piece of human garbage like Triple H. Let it feed. Let the anger flow through you. Sorry about that, folks. Mr. J is indisposed right now. This show is terrible. Let me finish things up for Mr. J while he's having his psychotic episode. Let me recap the show, the matches, like Mr. J usually does. Um, special mention to the whole thing with Shane at the beginning of the show. That was quite nice. 
I'm glad that Shane's back, and hopefully he'll add something new. Something the fucking show desperately needs. The first match, Adrian Neville and the Lucha Dragons losing to the New Day in a good match, albeit a little long match. <sighs> a shitty promo from Paul Heyman and all that dumb shit. The Ascension completely jobs to the Uso ass clowns in a crappy match that the crowd had no reaction to. <clears throat> AJ Styles and Chris Jericho stomp the piss out of Heath Slater and Curtis Axel of the Jabroni Outcasts in a filler match. For what it was, it was okay, but it really would have been better if AJ and Jericho had been going against anybody else. The Wyatt family has to have help from a distraction caused by Ryback leaving his team hanging high and dry to get the win over said team of Ryback, Big Show, and Kane. The Wyatt family look like a bunch of jabroni monkeys. And this is really bad for them. I couldn't care less about them. Anyways. The crowd was also dead again. Why the hell couldn't this have happened last night at the pay-per-view? Why did they have to do the match again? Stupid. Sasha jobs out talentless piece of ghetto trash Naomi in a crappy match, crappy match rather, only to have help from Becky Lynch and then have to put up with the tranny looking Charlotte. And in the main event, Roman Reigns, I, uh, suppose wins by disqualification over Sheamus after the interference of Triple H and we get a friggin epic beatdown that sees the face bleeding like a stuck pig and the heel getting cheered like fucking crazy motherfucker Triple H Triple H -er. You are a fucking scumbag. And you do not deserve to continue drawing breath on this earth, as does Brock Lesnar. You're both pieces of human garbage that need to be extinct. WrestleMania is going to suck donkey balls. We have what? A triple threat match for the Divas title. <laughs> we have Roman versus Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight title. <laughs> we have Ambrose set to face his death bell against Brock Lesnar in a no-holds-barred street fight. What else is going to happen that won't be any... Oh, yes. Shane McMahon has to face The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match, in probably the only match anybody gives a fuck about. And if Shane doesn't win, things are still going to suck. So he had better win. That was Raw, folks. The road to WrestleMania begins. And this road is covered in potholes and speed bumps and all sorts of thumbtacks and other things to 
make you want to stop your car and not make it to Wrestlemania. This company sucks right now. Mark my words, if they don't do something drastic at WrestleMania, the company could be dead very soon. And I'm hoping it does. Because I hate this company, and I hate the people who run this company. It's time for this company to die and make way for other companies to get TV deals. Better wrestling. Actual wrestling. Not this horrible baloney garbage of sports entertainment. <sighs> that was Raw, everybody. From February 22nd, 2016. Detroit, Michigan, the Joe Louis Arena. I have been Mr. Suicide. Uh, taking Mr. J's place as he is unable to finish after his psychotic break. I'm going to have to go check on him in the closet there, so, um, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to that. Uh, Join us next time when we go over SmackDown spoilers. Join us for then. Goodbye.